On tonight's show, we're talking sports. We're talking about the LDS series, not the Mormons, the baseball. We're talking the NBA's New Deal and lots and lots of NFL for week five going into week six. And Brendan's not giving me a countdown, so I'm just going to say let's start the show. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Yes, we are. <laughs> Nothing like a Chewbacca chainsaw to wake you up at night. But we have a special guest with us tonight. Tonight we have sports aficionado Lucas. Say what's up, Lucas. What's going on, fellas? Well, there's more than just us, hopefully. There might Every be some women watching the show. So you only want to say hello to the men viewers. Is that what you're saying to me? You know, <laughs> ladies, they already know anyways. Oh, they, they already know? Okay, okay. They already well. know. Just so the guys who didn't know, he said. So no, I'm just playing with them. I'm just playing with them. So tonight we do have our sports going. That's why we have a sports aficionado. Get it? Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? See what I'm doing? You know? Okay. So uh, that's where Brendan wamps me, and he's t- there. You go. But yeah, so we're gonna start it off this week the same way we started off every week, and bring you the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the War. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would help if I could speak English. Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. And it won't be brought to you by... It'll be brought to you by Lucas. So, Lucas, start us off. Who's our Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winner? The Chewbacca Chainsaw Week Award winner will go to Jamel McLean from Berlin uh, for their outstanding victory against the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, and I actually I didn't watch the game because uh, I'm not in Germany, but I know who you're talking about. This guy ran down the court and had that beautiful running jumper there. Right at the end, and it was it was a beautiful thing, and to to have that skill set to go against the the past, just the champs of the NBA and beat them is an is an amazing feat in itself. And most people are like, oh, hey, it's preseason, you know? They probably didn't know they had their starters in the whole. Tim Duncan was the one who I believe he made the shot over. So I think it's a very well worth award giving to him. And don't be surprised if you see him get picked up on a ten day contract by somebody here in the United States just because of that. Definitely. All right. So let's give them the award. Let's give them the award. <laughs> All right. So let's stick on the NBA subject and roll it on over to. Uh, this is just something that kind of you know got me upset. I- I'm a little bit peeved about this because I am a Washington Wizards fan. I make no doubt about it. I am a homer. We do talk about other teams, but I'm a homer. Lucas, I know you are too. Yes, I am. Both, both Wizards fans, we actually, whenever we can, we go to see the games. Um, and the NBA has suspended Nene and Dewan Blair. Now, they also sp- suspended two other guys, but uh, it doesn't matter. They're not going to make the team. Uh, for the first game of the regular season, for an altercation that involved them against the Bulls in the first game of the preseason for them, where Paul Pierce and Joe Kim Noah kind of got into it. Now, Nene and Blair left the bench. Now, everybody knows you don't leave the bench. It's not a good thing to do. But they did, and so they're getting suspended. Now, I have a problem with the fact that they're suspending them for one game of the regular season when this is a preseason thing. Like, how does that fit the crime? That absolutely fits the crime, actually, because no. otherwise, how how are you going to punish them otherwise? What, are you just going to let people do whatever the preseason? Maybe they start, like, busting people's knees in the preseason because, hey, it doesn't matter, come regular season. you gotta, you got to punish them, do, like, real punishment. Yeah, we're lucky it was only one game. They could have, you know, they could have made it worse, but one game, you can't get too upset about that. One game shouldn't make it much of a difference for us. And and granted, at least it's the first game of the year, not like somewhere in the middle of the year. But it's That'll a be, preseason game. How do you get, like... I mean, suspend them for one preseason game, not one game. I mean, come on. I'm telling you, you, you you have to do it for this kind of thing. Like, if. They're getting up and doing unsportsmanlike stuff and stuff that you know you're not supposed to do. You have to go with the regular season game because otherwise it doesn't matter. I call shenanigans. Well, I'll say I don't agree with it either, but, you know, it could have been worse. Well, 
of course it could have been worse. They could have been like, "Here, you're going away for 12 games." I just think that's. I'm just. I, I just. I love Nene, the one name wonder. I mean, he doesn't even need a last name. I know that I remember the first time I saw his last name. It's Hilario. I was like, "Who the hell is that? When did we get that guy on the Wizards?" He's the one name wonder. That's all we need is Nene. That's it. Nene. Come on, everybody, say it with me. Nene. <laughs> so, but yeah, so uh, something else that came out of that game though was that Derrick Rose. I don't know. He's looking like he's back. So if he doesn't just totally rupture his ACL again. Derrick Rose is looking pretty good. What do you think about the the future of the Bulls if Derrick Rose is going to be in there? Uh, I think it's looking pretty good. (laughs) What? Terrible. Man, he played a phenomenal, you know, Olympics. He's going to, you know, if he he can keep his knees in good condition, the Bulls can have a good season. Will they be the champs? No. Well, who's going to be the champs if not them? Well, it'll be honestly between either the Wizards, not just because I'm a home fan, but because <laughs> if you look at all, yeah, nay, nay. if you look at our star power and the way they performed last year, the one person we lost was really Trevor Ariza. And we got Paul Pierce, and Paul Pierce is not a scrub, and that veteran leadership is still going to help us out. Yeah. But it's going to be up between us and then, you know, you got to throw Cleveland. Nay, in. Nay. Yeah, Washington did do surprisingly well this year too, but I think that's that's one of the things. It still really was a surprising uh, year last year. Uh, how well we did. I, I'm kind of thinking before we the, the Wizards get a championship, we really are going to need to to pick up um, Kevin Durant. So 2016. Well, I mean, all right, all right. Let's just say that we're going to get a championship before Kevin Durant comes, and then we're <clears> going to get a million after Kevin Durant comes. That's right, a million. <laughs> just, <laughs> just continuously getting championships. <laughs> Even there aren't any. They're just going to rack up. Yeah, and so that's that's the subject that we've talked about uh, for for months on end is how Kevin Durant's coming to DC. I'm gonna go ahead and say it that it was my idea to bring him here and take all credit. Okay, so you guys just agree with me. I'll go with that from the silence. So I don't know. Let us know what you guys think about Nene and uh, and Blair getting suspended for the first game. Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's keep it on the NBA. And the NBA recently just signed a new TV rights deal. Now, the two places they sign it with is the TNT TBS partner group, so I guess Turner Broadcasting Group, and the Disney Group, you know, ESPN, ABC, and. What am I missing? What's the other one? ESPN, ABC, and... Damn it. There's another one that does ba- that does basketball? Uh, it's, well, I guess it's called ESPN, ABC, and Disney. So, yeah, those are those those are the big ones that get the basketball. So, this new deal is going to be worth $2.66 billion annually. Now, their previous deal was worth about $900 million annually. So, this is more than doubled it. Almost, come close, triple it. And... One big thing I think about this is LeBron James, he signed a two-year deal with the Cavaliers. Now everybody's like, oh, he might not want to stay. He might... No, I think he's looking for the money. What is, what's going to happen with player salaries with, when you get this much more money? Are we going to see that triple? Are we going to get $60 million a year players? I yes. doubt it. Honestly, I doubt it initially because the, I mean, the NBA still has that soft cap. Now, it's not a hard cap like the that NFL has. That can change. But it hasn't yet. And because the deal deals are signed, right? When's yeah, the deal signed for? Yeah, but the new CBA, the deal signed for not this year, I believe next year, um, or in two years or something. It's it's very soon, but then the new CBA, whenever that happens, it's going to happen close to after. What do you think, Lucas? Personally, I think it, uh, you're going to see a lot bigger, way bigger contracts. LeBron James was very smart on doing what he did. He's going to have definitely get the contracts he's always deserved that he didn't get while he was in Miami. Well, and he did come out and say that I've never been the highest played player on my team, yeah, even all throughout Miami. So, and he did, I mean, LeBron James, say what you want about him. He is a smart guy. He did make $30 million off the Beats by Dre sales. So, I mean, when he's saying take care of the players, I think he means take care of my pocket. Yeah. So. He wants that time now. And I, how can we say he doesn't deserve it? Now, he is really skinny, so how can you pay him the same amount of money for being him being like half the size of a player he was before? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. 
<laughs> that's just that's just my weird thing. But yeah, so I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, hit us up. Comments down below. Is this is this, are the players' salaries going to skyrocket? Or are they going to shoot down? Eh, who knows? I, so, I can tell you for sure that the owners will not will will try to resist skyrocketing the player salaries as much as they can. Well, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. We'll see how the negotiations go with the 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 players uh, association. So. And that is a pretty Shark Tank Players Association. So we all saw what happened last time, the the strike. Uh, we're going to see what, what's going on with this one. But, yeah, like I said, let us know what you guys think. Hit us up, comments down below. Are players salaries going to skyrocket or are going to stay the same? You know, Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Uh, plus on Facebook. Always good ways of getting hold of us. I need to have some sort of abbreviation for that. I say that a lot, and it gets annoying. I don't know. I just don't like saying it all the time. Just Nothing hit us up idea. everywhere. Hit us up where on the internet, because we're there all the time. Just right. comment down below. <laughs> but yeah, so let's roll it on over to baseball, and we're going to talk about the LDS series. Oh, do you mean the Mormons? Why are we talking about Mormons? In no, baseball? not Mormons. Silly, the <laughs> League Division Series. Okay, me and Brendan did kind of try to plan that joke out, and then I panicked during my intro and used the joke early, so that's why it was so horrible. Although, seriously, when Brian told me this earlier, I was like, what are you talking about? And I, Because <laughs> when I Googled LDS, the first three or four pages... Or just Look, about Mormons. When you hear LDS, what do you think of? A, a, a disease <laughs> or Mormons? <laughs> I think of baseball. Thank you. Thank you. You think of baseball because he's the sports aficionado. That's why he thinks of baseball. But yeah, so LDS, Latter day Saints, if anybody out there doesn't know. So, but um, let's start off with the NLDS, and that's <clears throat> how the Dodgers. Yeah, they got kind of embarrassed by, nah, I guess not embarrassed, by the Cardinals. And you had pitchers, their best pitcher coming out there, Clayton Kershaw. You had Yasiel Puy not show up. And um, St. Louis has won a bunch. But, I mean, I was kind of surprised by that result. What do you think, Lucas? You know, now that the Nationals lost, I wasn't surprised by anything. Mm. But what can you say about that? Yeah, well, I mean, just game one was just super surprising to me, and I'm never going to say super surprising again. That's just not, not a good way to put it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but it was like a 9-8 game when you had two of the best pitchers in the league with Clayton Kershaw and Wainwright on the mound. And then they turned around and used Kershaw again for game four. So that they were really rushing them back because they were desperate. Now, both... This team fell down 2 nothing, so they lost their first two games at home. So they were really playing from behind. It just didn't seem like their manager had enough, I don't know, wherewithal to just will them through the playoffs because most of the time I don't really put too much stock in the manager. Who cares what order they're batting in? But in this, you know, you got to play the small ball. Every pitcher that comes out counts. I mean, sometimes you got to go lefty-lefty, righty-righty. You know, you got to play those games. you got to play every game like it's going to be the last game of the season. And it just didn't seem like he did it. Now, there's another manager that did that in the other side. But um, before we get to that, I mean, St. Louis really, like I said, they just showed their experience. That was a big plus. They have been to the past four uh, NLCSs. That's the championship series. Um, so this round of the playoffs. And it, it showed. There's a reason why, because they know how to win. But on the other side, uh, I know Lucas was into this series a little bit more than the other one. You had the Nats losing 3-1. And again, they fell behind 2-0 in the series. You had this crazy 18-game series. But I don't know, what would you say is the biggest reason that they lost this one? And not enough playoff experience. You're looking at, you know, they've been to the playoffs twice, uh, year before last. They made it first round, lost the first round again. You know, you go back into it. It's it's really hard to say when you have a team that's what the, by far the best team in the league, and we're stacked, and you just can't get it done. You know, it's got to come down to just the experience and age. You know, it's just like the it's like Oklahoma City. They're stacked. They're a great team, but when it comes to the playoffs, they just can't seem to get it done. Yeah, and he was referring to the Oklahoma City Thunder, which again they have Kevin Durant. So I mean, they're amazing. <laughs> you can't Kevin Durant's on the squad, but yeah, no, I mean, I really I, I bring it down more 
to it being Matt Williams' fault. That's really who I look at as the focal point for the reason these this team lost. Because when they brought Matt Williams in this year, they were like, hey, this guy's going to do all the little things to win games. He's going to play the small ball. He's going to do the bunts. He's going to move ba- base runners over. He's really going to try to to work those guys in, in there. And that's what I think I had a lack of. I mean, the last game they put, who is it, uh, Barrett out there. Now, this guy, he was their strikeout guy during the regular season, but he's a rookie. I can't imagine putting a rookie out there, and I believe there's two men on base. There was like two outs. They were up by one run. And what happened? They got a hit, cleared the bases. They were down by one run, and they ended up losing the game by one run. It's, it's, I think it's more rookie mistakes from the manager than from any of the players. Because the pitching, you're right. The, it's all there. Strasburg, maybe not the best, but you know he's, he was solid. Zimmerman had a great performance. Fister came out and did well. Gio Gonzalez, again, I might have you know, gone Strasburg on short rest, but... It just felt to me like Matt Williams was managing this this series like he was still in the regular season, like he still had 100 games left. And that's not the right mentality. Definitely right on that subject. Wow, I'm glad you agree with me. Huh. Yeah. Because if you don't know... It could have also been, um, I guess, things going to their head with how, I guess, surprisingly, they were just, like, out ahead going into this. They Like, for a long time, they were the only really guaranteed team in that league and so maybe they got maybe, maybe went to their head a little bit maybe they thought yeah we're secure like we, we can make it past at least the first round easy let's just give people some experience maybe that's why the rookie goes in too it's like yeah give them some experience handling this pressure because we got this and they didn't got it pride before the fall is what you're saying huh yeah I'm, I'm wondering because they because towards the end of the year they didn't have the same kind of pressure that um, you might be expecting on a baseball team of that caliber, or uh, or what they've experienced before, because they they had it locked in for the most part pretty early on. Like there's a little bit of pressure still, like up until the the last well, few no, games. I mean, but it was, it was, it was honestly pretty yeah, solid. It was, they the the Atlanta Braves did fall back in August. They started really falling back, and the Nationals really started surging. I believe that's around when they had their 10 game winning streak. So yeah, but. Yeah, so I don't know. Let us know what you guys think about the NLC, NLDS. Um, and who, who's, whose fault is it? Is it the Dodgers manager's fault? Is it Matt Williams' fault from the Nationals? Or is it the players? Did they just blow it? I don't know. Let us know. Hit us up. Comments down below. Uh, where's my face on Twitter? And Google Plus and Facebook. I'm not going to say all the rest because it's called the internet. But uh, let's move it over to the ALDS. And let's talk about... I mean, these are my boys. I do love the Nationals, but these are my boys. The Orioles just absolutely crushed. I mean, they they just just <clears throat> spanked the Tigers, and the Tigers had three of the past three Cy Young winners for the AL. I mean, you're talking Max Scherzer, Verlander, David Price, three past winners, and they spanked them. Nice, yeah. which is always good. Like that's who I would really expect again. Um, we wanted to see the Nationals win so that we could see the Orioles and Nationals possibly in the series, but I think of either of those teams, the Orioles is who we, we really expected. They had things like just, they were just doing so phenomenal this year. Uh, it would be just shocking, absolutely shocking, if they didn't make it at least past the first round. Hmm. No, again, they played. They played against the first three Cy Young winners. So I mean, those guys come out and pitch like they can. It doesn't. I, I don't care who they are. Don't, I do. don't, don't you disbelieve my Orioles? I, I called shenanigans like 15 times on them this year too for getting those pitchers. No, but also, I mean, you... don't forget they still played very well and they and they won without quite a few of their players and big Chris Cross Davis. That is true. He's not eligible to be back until the World Series, so no, <laughs> he's too busy lifting cars off of pedestrians on 295. Yep. So, or 695. Uh, it's one of those 95s. There's too many 95s out there. But yeah, I mean, they're just they were just too good. I think they're the best all-around team left in the playoffs right now. But then you also had the surprise Royals um, sweeping the Angels. Uh, I did not expect that. Yeah, okay. well, we were rooting for the the Royals a little bit anyway because yeah, how long have. has it been since they've been in there? Uh, 29 years. I think this means I think they might have a little bit more drive because of that history behind them, and the the fans definitely have more drive to to get in because it's been so so long since they've been in the playoffs. 
And, and, I mean, they don't really have any specialness on offense. They have some decent pitching, a good bullpen. I mean, the best part about them is their outfielders are amazing. And, I mean, you wouldn't think that could win them a series. You know, with enough practice and, uh, you know, hard work, you can do anything. And I didn't get to, I didn't get to catch that game and or watch any of the series, but, you know, it's been proven over time and time. You don't have to have all the best players in the world to, to be a great team or even win a series. Now, can they yeah. make it to the World Series? Well, that's another question in advance. We'll have to wait to see that. Yeah, and, and you know what? The ALCS will answer that for us. But let us know what you guys thought about the ALDS series. Is, series is. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, add Words for My Face on Twitter. Words for My Face, gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But we're going to move this on to probably the best part of the show. And this is the part of the show that we reserve for the longest part of the show. And that is because it's the greatest sport in the world. Lucas, what am I talking about? F-f-f-football! There we go, there we go. So let's start it off with something that's really annoying me because I have both these players on different fantasy teams. And that is, why are all the wide receivers getting hurt? I, I know you know who I'm talking because about. Because they're Calvin... wide No, stop it. Are you wide receiver prejudice? Are you anti wide receiver right? They're out there. They some like they they go across the center sometimes and they get hit. All right, yeah, they do. That's how it goes. But so we have Calvin Johnson going down, and I mean, Lucas, what is what do you think is going to be the impact on the Lions with Calvin Johnson probably being out of the lineup this week? You know, it'll be a quite a big impact. But you know, they still have they still have weapons. Eric Ebron, that new t- rookie tight end. He's actually showing up the season. They actually made a couple of good plays. Golden Tate is, you know, he's not Calvin Johnson, but he's no. still a solid. And they can still win. They have their defense has stepped up tremendously this year. So they can still win this week. They're gonna have to step it up a little bit more. Remember, Calvin Johnson was held without a couch last week. He did get injured, but he was still held without a catch last week. You really don't have to remind me he was on my team, got me zero points. No, he was on my team too. So he was on everybody's team and got nobody any points. What the hell? He wasn't on my team. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and then we have A.J. Green, another one of those prolific deep threat receivers. And he got – now, it wasn't going to be like he was out of the game, but then yesterday he was carted off the field because of his toe injury. So that's another big impact because he's Andy Dalton's favorite receiver. I don't know. What type of impact do you think that will have on them, Lucas? Another huge impact, but – once again, you're still looking at the uh, the other receivers. Uh, they have a great, uh, a pretty actually not bad tr- uh, run game going on. Andy Dalton can still deliver the ball to other receivers. Uh, Sanu, Muhammad Sanu, mm-hmm. he's actually been showing up pretty well this year. Uh, but I I don't think they will be able to um, win this week without AJ Green. Yeah, well, I mean, you're right with the running because Giovanni Bernard, he's one of the best pass catching running backs out there, and he's really stepped up his running game too since they kind of got rid of Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Um, so it is going to be interesting. Now they do lean a lot on their defense, but we'll see if that's enough to bring them through this week. Um, and speaking of more injuries, I don't know. There's a lot of injuries this week, but uh, Cardinals. Drew Stanton just got hurt last week, and if you don't know who he is, he was the guy who was replacing Carson Palmer and helped lead them to their, their really good 3-1 and one start, I believe, so far this year. Now, he just got hurt last week. Now, their backup came in. They did lose. I believe they were playing the Broncos. Mm-hmm. But it looks like Carson Palmer will be coming back. Um, he had some electroshock therapy in his dead nerve or something like that, and it seems to have brought it back to life. How do you think this this offense is going to look with Carson Palmer back at the helm? Are we going to see a little more of Larry Fitzgerald, hopefully? I want to say yes, but my fantasy stats say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, uh, he's he, he's going to have a good game eventually this season. And going against us this week, uh, you know, we actually, ha- shockingly, we have not allowed that many fantasy points against opposing wide receivers. Uh so I would say no. He's not going to improve at least this week. He'll have eventually a good game, but not this week against us. You're right. If you're a tight end, though, you catch three touchdowns, and you're good. Yeah. Because <laughs> the Arizona Cardinals are playing the Redskins this week. I think the other thing to consider, too, is like he's been out for, for a few weeks. I know it's ta- like that's not an insignificant amount of time to have to – uh, you know, get back in it, yeah, and get back in the flow with the other players. So if he just got back uh, from some electroshock therapy, I don't know what all, how well you recover from that. 
Um, but I would expect to see at least a couple weeks of, of getting back in the groove. Well, I mean, his injury was kind of, you know, his nerve went dead, so I believe it was just not receiving the electrical signals um, that his brain was trying to send it as well, which sounds pretty scary, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, that, that uh, sounds severe. Uh, but so I think they sent some pulses through there, did something, and that started to reinvigorate it. Um, there was no permanent nerve damage going on there, but yeah. Yeah, but that also sounds like the kind of injury that, Weakens the muscle significantly over that time, so he's probably he, he he's going to take him some time, I think, to to get back in the groove of things, to 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 rebuild whatever muscle he he may or may not have lost, and you know just a little bit of time. But that's like Lucas was saying, like I don't expect much this week. Uh, I honestly would say probably don't expect too much the week after that, but it won't be too long before you can start expecting something out of the guy. Like, this season we'll probably see something, because it was only three weeks, and it wasn't, like, that bad of an yeah. injury. And and so when we drafted the Words to My Face League, I did draft RG3. Carson Palmer was my capable backup, and both of them went away. Now I have Austin Davis, and I couldn't be happier, so... You know, that's yeah, neither here nor there. Kirk Cousins. <laughs> oh, oh, that yeah. worked out for you. Yeah, yeah. It worked out the, well the first game, alright? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he he had like thirty points almost for me the first game so so yeah yeah we were too bad for the, against Philly he played yeah, good that's against what Philly. I'm saying yeah that was a, that was a good one and then Jackson, uh, Jacksonville and the Philly yeah nobody picked him up for a Jacksonville game yeah right yeah, you got me five points for uh, the Giants game Ooh, ooh damn I th- dang I thought he would at least got you negative yeah I I was expecting so, negative too he should have got you negative <laughs> yeah he did oh, play against you that week <laughs> and who won. Yeah, we'll, we don't talk about that. You okay. cheat. You we'll cheat. talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. We'll save all, we'll save all of my victory speeches for later. But uh, another person coming back from injury this week is the young quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, the kid out of LSU. Now, I've actually liked him. He didn't start right away this season, but what he's shown me in the first couple weeks is he's kind of played like the Redskins expected RG3 to play. Got a good head on his shoulders, mobile, but doesn't always run. Uses his arm a little bit more. I think, you know what, Teddy Bridgewell, I have a lot of faith in him. Eventually he'll be a great, uh, not a great, but he'll be a very solid quarterback as long as they get Adrian Peterson back. Yeah, and we'll we'll see what happens with that. But Ted, Teddy Bridgewater, it seemed like he made a lot out of nothing. I'm trying to name one of his wide receivers, and Coradell Patterson comes to mind, and this kid kind of came out of nowhere this year. Okay, nobody has any thoughts on that one. So. All right, well, <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm trying to say something. I didn't want to just talk. I was waiting for Brendan. I didn't want to just cut Brendan off. No, but, just look at Brendan's you know. stone face. Nobody in the viewer <laughs> audience can see it, but we can see Brendan's stone face. Brendan, say uh, something just so the audience can see your stone face. Uh, <laughs> see, that's yeah. his stone face. Just to, I guess, just to put, it, you know, just to top it off, uh, you know, with Teddy Bridgewater, yeah, you know, he might have a couple games, good, good games this season, but. Once again, it's his first rookie season, so he'll have a couple of good games because people are going to try and, you know, they're not going to get everything on tape that they want to get. What's going to happen afterwards? You know, he does, Cordell Patterson's good, but Cordell Patterson is, honestly, he's not a number one receiver. Not I, yet. I couldn't agree more. I could Greg not agree Jennings, more. Greg Jennings is, uh, has always been a solid, reliable target, but he's, he's old. He's, he's very, in his mid thirties now, so he's, yeah. he's getting up there in age. So he's he's lost a step. So you know you have to take all that into a factor. And without Adrian Peterson, even though uh, Asiata is playing very well, uh, he'll have a decent season if he comes back. But he's not going to be stellar. Well, and let's stick on the top top that 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 that. All right, let's stay on the topic of Adrian Peterson and and keep it going. Um, they have just set his trial date for December 1st. Now, I do hear his lawyers are trying to move that up sooner uh, because they want to get him back on the field, um, but he faces a possible two years in prison if he is convicted of these child abuse charges. See, I thought that the, the NFL had a policy of not um, going with any punishments until after courts. But I guess they've been changing that around because of the... Uh, the with at least with domestic violence cases. Now, if you really look at his case, they what what has happened is he they've been given the commissioner's exemption. So right now they don't have to play him, but they still have to pay him. So he's not technically suspended, but he's not allowed anywhere near team facilities. Which you know, this whole process is, in my personal opinion, is been way, you know, it's it's 
for me it's stupid. I, I think uh, he was, uh, you know, this is way too much. You you can't just you're disciplining your kid. You know, that's I understand that there's a limit to go to, but he didn't knock his he the kid was didn't go unconscious, he didn't break any bones. He might have had a bruise, but how many kids out there have ever had you know got disciplined by their parents and not got a bruise? I've had many bruises, but. It makes you. It does make your kids a better person. It teaches them right and wrong, and that there are consequences in life. And it does make the kids better people. If they don't have it, they they might not act properly. Yeah, and now I mean I'm not trying to tell anybody how to discipline their kids. Everybody is brought up different ways. Now yeah. my thought on this, and I've said it before, I do not think Adrian Peterson is a child abuser. I do think he bordered on child abuse with this incident though, because there were cuts and welts on this kid's body. So. I, I One thing I've always heard, now I don't have any kids, so this is coming from a place I have no experience with, but it's never to discipline your kid in anger, and it seemed like he did. So I do think he took it too far. I don't Again, I don't view him as a child abuser, but he kind of straddled the line with child abuse on this one, in my opinion. Yeah, honestly. Let's let Brandon, um, the one, with, the one, one of us with kids, we'll let him talk about it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I would say... Um, <clears throat> I kind of reserve my judgment. I'll, I'll let the courts sort that out because no matter what we hear from the media, we don't know all the details. We don't really know everything that went on in that case. There was a little bit more for us to say in some of the other domestic abuse cases this year. Like with Ray Rice, we all saw the video, right? Mm -hmm. Um I haven't seen... You and know, if you video. haven't seen the Words From My Face video, go ahead and look it up. It's our highest rated yeah. video so far. <laughs> but, but with Peterson, I we haven't really seen it that I'm aware of. I haven't seen it. Um, I, I'm willing to let the court sort it out to, to flesh out all the details. Uh, as a matter of discipline, yeah, I mean, I, I always believe that you need to have some level of discipline. You don't want to just let kids run free. It's not good for their character later on. Um, but there are lines that you you have to you have to play you, and yeah, the the anger thing. Sometimes anger makes you want to do a little bit more to your children than than is appropriate. So you kind of have to keep yourself in check because you're the adult and children are children. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, like I, I don't know where he went with this one. Uh, there are lines. And I don't know if he crossed it or not because I don't have all the details. Uh, I'm willing to w wait and see what the how it plays out in court for this one. Yeah, and, and none of us are condemning Adrian Peterson here. I, I, I mean, just, if he did, you know, if he did, you know, do something more heinous than what we uh, know, then then yeah, then then he should be locked away. But let's also put it this right way: now. is it was the second grand jury. Now, he already went in front of one grand jury back in June, and they decided not to press charges because they did not believe it was child abuse back in June. And then the prosecutors re-brought up the charges, and then the grand jury that happened in September, I think it was, then decided, yes, it was. So was it, Wait, wait, wait. Were, were these the same charges yeah. or but a it, different instance? It was because same charges. Double same jeopardy. charges. No, not double jeopardy because he was never tried. It was grand jury is different than an actual jury trial. Yeah, so but was, grand jury decides uh, whether it is a criminal defense and they can bring it to to trial. Okay. So that is that. But like I'm saying, it's split. So the people who do know all the evidence are already split on it because that's they present everything in front of the grand jury. So yeah, that's just it's just one of those things. Again, I I, I side with you guys and just let's see what happens. Um. So let us know what you guys think. Hit us up. Comments down below, of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Let's move it on. And uh, you know what I want to talk about? A uh, player that I picked up in both my fantasy football leagues, and that's Brandon Oliver. And that guy, man, or Braden Oliver, that guy, he's just – he's done – what a game he had last week. I mean, he had something like uh, 70 yards receiving, 120 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Um, and that's not really the story. The story is that the San Diego Chargers signed Ronnie Brown. Now, if you don't know who he is, I believe he was the fourth overall pick by the Miami Dolphins a couple years ago. Him and uh, Cadillac Williams came out at the same time, and both of them seemed to disappear from the league at the same time. But uh, I think that's the highest pick that's been used on a draft on a running back since Trent Richardson. And they're kind of showing you why you shouldn't do that. But, yeah, so Ronnie Brown, he's still around. I mean, who expected that guy to stick around? I didn't. You know, if you still got a little gas in the tank, why not play? And if people still believe in you, hey, 
why not? So he's uh, he's he's always a solid backup. If you can, he can be a solid backup third string, even a second string if he needs to. He's still got some gas left though. Well, I, I mean, I can see Ryan right Matthews now. coming back and having a you know taking a Brandon Brandon's Oliver's spot, but I don't even see Donald Brown ever retaking that spot after no. Oliver's performance. No, that, definitely not. I mean, unless Donald Brown somehow next week got a couple carries and broke off a couple big runs, you know, I Oliver should definitely take the spot right now. You got to go with a hot hand, especially while your star running backs out. That's why I picked him up and I'm starting yeah. him in both my leagues. So yeah, so uh, well, I don't know. I he does not do good for you. Oh, thanks, jerk. But uh, yeah, so yeah. All right, let's talk about let's talk about the the name on the T-shirt that Red Lucas is wearing, and that is the Washington Redskins, because this was interesting. I just thought this was kind of funny. So stories reports were coming out that after the Monday night loss from to the uh, the Seattle Seahawks, there was laughter being heard coming from the showers which I kind of thinking is a little bit creepy that the reporters are creeping closer to the showers. I mean, shouldn't there be some level of privacy there? Has not um, been going on for a while, though? Yeah, but you shouldn't, like, I mean, still, that's creepy. Come on, they're taking showers. Let the guys shower. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm saying, like, the showers are in the locker rooms, aren't they? So, And they keep going into the locker rooms to get interviews. Remember there was a few years ago the big deal about, like, having a female journalist in the sh- in the not in the showers. <laughs> in the, she was in, in the, the showers? In the, <laughs> in no, the locker big, room. So I, the big I think thing about that was, it. was, was that they would just wait until people get out of the locker rooms altogether. So if, if it was me, I would say, like, hey, why, why are you walking around my locker room? Like, let me, let me wash off. Let me get dressed. Uh, why don't you wait over there at the press conference area? That's where I talk to a journalist. But, mm-hmm. but what? And I, I don't believe they let men into women's sports lockers af- locker rooms afterwards. No, so I do not they? think so. Yeah, you know, you look at you gotta look at it too as well. It's just like the players need time. I think they should have their time to really let the game settle and let them relax. You know, because you know, they're coming off a loss. If they're coming off a loss, you, they don't want to be bothered while in the locker room. They want to be able to sit there and just, you know, consult with their teammates and just, you know, get their get their uh, you know their mind together and then, you know, figure out what to say because you never know. You come out and you ask a question to them right after they lose and then they may say something that they're not supposed to say and then you blow completely out of proportion. Yeah, no, I am emotions yeah, but I think especially what, in football. I think that's what a lot of journalists are going for though, to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. that that's why they do it at that point. Well, and they want to just get the story as soon as possible. Cause everyone wants the story immediately, but yeah, Especially but I think nowadays, there's something true. you should should give the guys a few minutes. You know, there's got to be there should be a, a rule though that that the NFL needs to make that yeah. they cannot go really in until to. the players go out and then they can address them. Yeah, I mean, give them at least 15 minutes. So yeah, but that that's actually not the story, but we made it into a topic. But yeah, so Jay Gruden, um, he was asked by reporters who had eavesdropped on the, the, the creepy reporters he's dropping on the players in the showers saying that they had heard laughter and they thought oh well uh, what do you think about that and so Jay Gruden goes oh well, nobody better be satisfied I'm going to launch an inquiry into this now ha ha nobody better be laughing after losses and I just think this is kind of blowing everything out of portion number one maybe they're watching a really funny YouTube video because they have those S4s that are, are waterproof you never know there's lots of funny YouTube videos out there maybe they were watching words to my face and I told a joke and they liked it Maybe they should be watching YouTube videos. Maybe they should be thinking about how they lost. And how they Maybe they just want to that. distract themselves. I just, I just think it's, I think it's being blown a little bit out of proportion. Um, and and now I'm not hating on Jay Gruden. I think he was kind of baited into this. But an inquiry on laughing in the showers after a loss? I don't know, Lucas. What do you think? I find that really weird. <laughs> yeah. I just find that. I just, I'm like, okay. <laughs> you see, you heard laughing in the showers, and you know. I don't see – first off, if a player's laughing in the shower, I don't see that much of a big deal, first off. You know, when you're coming off a loss, yeah, you want to have that, oh, we lost. There's no fun in games. But people deal with things certain different ways. And if you're losing, you know, you want to be able to leave with a positive mindset, you know. And that's, you know, having a crack on a joke in the shower with somebody. Yeah, I mean, that's what they do. I mean, I, I, again, yes, take the loss seriously, but don't don't – fret on it too much because yeah. the more you dwell on it, the more it hurts you. You know, it's exactly. good to be able to put it behind you. That is what all NFL players should do. Have short memories. Um, so yeah, it's kind of silly. But hit us up with let us know what you think. Maybe maybe you know the joke that was told in the showers. Let us know in comments down below. I'd be very interested to see it. 
Um, but yeah, so let's move on to a little bit more of a positive note. And just real quickly, Tamba Ali, uh, he is the linebacker from the Kansas City Chiefs. He has come out and he is working with the Heart to Heart Foundation to construct an Ebola clinic actually in Monrovia. And so, so many negative things come about out about these NFL players when they're doing domestic violence and all this, when 95% of them are doing good things. So I just want to really, you know, let's... Um, Give a round of applause to uh, Tom Ali for coming out and donating to a good cause. Because what's happening in that whole part of Eastern Africa and it's spreading west is just catastrophic. I, I mean, and the death rates are, are just rising higher and higher and higher. There's something going to be like there's 3,000 people dead now. There's going to be 10,000 people dead by Ju- January. So uh, good job, Tomba. Do something good for people. You don't you don't know. And then I want to I want to I want to ask Lucas about this one. Now Richard Sherman came out after the game and said Pierre Garçon does not matter. Is he the worst horrible winner of all time? No. No. And um, no, he's not the worst horrible winner of all time. You know, I I I I enjoy Richard Sherman as a player, and you know he's I, I love that attitude. That it's one of the attitudes that's missing from the game that it has been. You know, you want to have that trash talker. You know, what else is going to motivate you more than saying having someone tell you that you're nothing? Pierre Garçon should come out this week and just light up Arizona. Unfortunately, he he was really right, but it, I don't think it's Pierre Garçon's fault. Pierre Garçon's a, a wonderful player. Kirk Cousins doesn't want to throw to him. I don't know. Maybe maybe the game plan has changed since uh, Kirk has come in, and they just don't think it, it's valuable to throw to him. Maybe they just want him to be a bait for everyone, even though they haven't thrown to him almost at all the last three games. So, like, I mean, I took him off my fantasy uh, off my fantasy lineup finally because. So you agree with Richard Sherman, huh? <laughs> have you have you seen him? Like, it's it's not even. I think that he I have played seen well. Him. He 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 got some Gatorade really cool on the sidelines the other day. Yeah, yeah, and he'll he'll be out there on the field. You can't you can't get two catches can't, a game. Two you can't game. Sing, you can't sing a lot, Garcon. Okay, Deshaun Jackson had a great game against Seattle, but don't forget, reflecting that's mostly off one big catch that was really nice. That Kirk Cousins was able to get away from heavy pressure, but when you don't have an offensive line, you're not getting anybody the ball, and you're not gonna have any time to throw it to anybody, whether it's RG three, whether it's Kirk Cousins. Whether you're Tom Brady, Tom Brady has not had enough time to throw the ball away this year either, and his teams aren't playing well. Yeah, they had a great game last week, but you can't. If you have no offensive line, you're not going to get the ball to anybody. And as That's good as Garcon was, mm-hmm. uh, or at least he can be, he showed it last year. You know, you can't always expect him to just do what he did last year all over again, especially when you don't have an offensive line. And that's true, but I think that we we've seen that he that like all the quarterbacks can get the ball to someone. Like, Pierre Garçon is getting the least catches. He's getting less catches than the running backs. He also draws like, more coverage, too. Yeah, well, that that's true, but I think that it's it's really something else is going on there, because by now, you would expect Garçon to be freed up a bit, and we've seen him him mostly freed up, and every once in a while, he gets, like, a bad pass, and every once in a while, he gets a pass in general, but it just hasn't. It doesn't seem like they're even looking to him as much as you would expect for your number one receiver. And I'm not even entirely sure why that is, because I don't think it's Garcon's fault. Because I think Garcon is still is still running fast. I think he's still playing well. Um, he's had a couple of drops that have been just terrible passes, though. Each time, like when he is is thrown a decent ball, he tends to make the play. Um, and yeah, I think he was getting some coverage, but I don't think he's getting as much coverage now, or he shouldn't be, because they're just not throwing to him. Well, well we weren't really talking about Pierre Garçon. We were talking about Richard Sherman, so thanks, guys, for taking me off topic. Okay, I'll get us back. <laughs> but I just want to say this. I just want to say this before we switch topics, is that I think Richard Sherman... Uh, yes, trash talk is a very integral part of this game, but trash talk belongs on the field. It does not belong on the microphones, on the Twitter, on everything else. I think he's a classless player. I think he's one of the most intelligent and one of the best players out there, but uses intelligence for bad. He's like a supervillain, and so we need some superhero. Hopefully this week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I'm going to root for the Dallas Cowboys this week, and especially Des Bryant to catch like 15 touchdowns on him and just munish him in the face, and you'll never hear me say that again. Somebody erase this video right now. 
I don't know if I can support this, Brian. This just in. The Redskins suck. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. I hate it when those updates are about Redskins. It's way better in the in the preseason. It was all about how the Cowboys were going to suck this year. I'm tired. Of, I'm turning off the updates. All right. Let's what move on to the last NFL story of the week, um, and we're going to talk about Jim Schwartz. Apparently, he is he got fired from the Detroit Lions as their head coach last year, moved on over to Buffalo Bills to be their defensive coordinator, and apparently asked his players that, hey, we're playing Detroit in week five. If we win, you guys want to carry me off on your shoulders? What do you guys think about that? You can't ask for that. It's got to be done by the players and the player's choice. You can never yeah, it's ask for that. kind of natural. Yeah. Otherwise, it has less meaning. Yeah. <laughs> it has no it's meaning. It's like you're demanding it. And players, you know, it's it's not. Yeah, it doesn't mean the same. Players don't feel that. It's like, who are you? We'll do it if you if you deserve it. But now, now, can't. now, the only way you can do this is you have to be a little sly about it. You let leak to what the assistant coach is that he is the hey, assistant coach. Your dream to be carried on, <laughs> and that he like lets us says, "Hey guys, you know it's always been the coach's dream to be carried off. So maybe we should." Think about that sometime when there's a big game. Like whatever. It might really make his <laughs> day. Go yeah. and say like, "Hey, carry me off." It'll really make his day, guys. Let's just do it for him. Let's let's just do it. Yeah. For him. Someone else has to has to get that one through there. Not not him. And it can't what? be a matter of like, oh, this particular game. Unless that particular game is the Super Bowl. It's kind of like giving yourself your own nickname. I mean, you can't. You're not allowed to do that. It's just it doesn't work. Somebody else has to give you the nickname, and you can't also proposition. Hey, give me a nickname, something like this. No, it just comes. Exactly. Yeah, you but, can't just say that. Hey, I'm gonna go by Brian Words for my face. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one allowed to do that. That is what I'm allowed to do. The show is Words for my face, and it's talking about my face and my words coming from it. So I'm allowed to do it. All right, I guess I. But uh, so let us know what you guys think about any of our NFL topics. Hit us up, comment down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook, all good ways of getting a hold of us. And now let's talk about dun 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 dun. I won't finish the song because it's copyrighted, but we're going to talk about the Words My Face Fantasy Football League. So uh, I'm just going to run down some of the scores that happened last week. Um, so let's start. Oh, let's just start with my game. Since I scored the most points this week, um, I am the disgruntled. Uh, I'm the disgruntled rookies. I did win 128 to 73. Now my big scores of the week were um, actually Eddie Lacy finally had a good game for me. Like I said, I put in Austin Davis. He only threw for 374 yards and three touchdowns. And um, looks like Julian Thomas had two touchdowns. And my kicker had 20 points. 20 points. Isn't that crazy? And I still. Had Ben Tate, Kirk Cousins had 19 points. That surprised me. Um, and Brian Quick had 20, so on the bench. Uh, now, I did play against Peyton Manning. He had 31 points with 479 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions brought him back a little bit. But that was really all I played against. So, so sorry, Team Baker. You were just underneath my, my steamroll. Uh, the next game we're going to talk about is Team Tavner versus Team Amingo 8, my baby. Now, both of these teams were um, tied up with the record. Now you have Team Tavner winning this week, uh, last week, up to 3-2. and two. Amigo 8, my baby, has... Actually, I'm sorry, Team Tavner lost, so Amigo 8, my baby, gained a little bit, winning 120-103. Winning to Really, um, it looks like Andre Ellington, man, he only had 32 yards rushing, but I had something like 120 yards receiving, if I'm correct. Do you, do you know what it was, Lucas? It had to be, it was like over, I know it was over 100 yards receiving, but he had like 28, 30-something fantasy points. Some yeah, 26, crazy. yeah, 26. Yes, it was, yeah. And uh, Jay Cutler there. Rob Gronkowski finally having a good game with six receptions, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Um, Jeremy Macklin, solid. So it, it just seemed like he had solid points all the way up and down. Now, on Team Tavner, he did have Phillip Rivers with 21 points, Matt Forte with 20, um, but it just didn't seem like it was enough to quite get him over the hump. So next game is going to be Cowboys and Indians. Fell short of Team Hugel. So Cowboys and Indians, she is two and three. Team Hugo is four and one. Um, and that was a close game, eighty-seven sixty-nine. I mean, there was no real scoring going on either way, uh, except for Demarius Thomas. Team Hugo had Demarius Thomas, man. He lit it up, two hundred twenty-six yards, two touchdowns for thirty-four points. So that is what won him the game single-handedly. Only one player. That's an interesting one. Huh. And you, you had Demarius Thomas, didn't you, in one of the leagues? I did. 
I did it. And I won that league. I won that game for my first game for my first win for that league. Ah, so there you go. Yeah. Victory. And let's see how you were doing in this league. Oh. <laughs> Ew. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Probably the least amount of points I've scored all season. It was a it was uh, a bad game and I blame Calvin least, Johnson. Least amount of points scored ever. Yeah, you had uh fifty nine points, lost to one of this the one of the show's favorite teams. Even though it's not mine or Brendan's team, uh, Team Redskin Potatoes did come out with 90 points. Now it, was, it wasn't big here or there, but he did have Deshaun Jackson got him 21 points. So that's a pretty big one. Yeah. Now you picked the right defense, though. 16 points. That's not bad. Got not it, bad. You know, but just Calvin Johnson got injured. I didn't have a tight end. There were no tight ends on the on the pickup field. There, so I was I had to guess. Amaro. I've never even heard of that guy. You know, <laughs> so. yeah. You know, I just I uh, I I took a it was a, that was more of a shot in the dark. I was like, I'm just gonna take a wing at it and see if he he might have a big game this week. But none of my players had to do anything. Drew Brees has not been uh, the quarterback that I thought he would have been, uh, and I think everybody can agree with it. He has not been the quarterback that yeah. he was supposed to be this season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With all those offensive weapons, he's not playing like he should. And I do got to give it to you though for trade of the century, um, for trade rape and team team T this year. He traded him. Uh, who was it? It was Tom Brady, who's playing horrible this year, except for the last game, for Le'Veon Bell. Okay. And so and I gave I him mean, Bernard Pierce. I gave him Bernard Pierce too. <laughs> who has not played since that one game. So you get trade of the century right there just for totally raking somebody win over something. the coals. Well, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll give that one to you. It's funny, too, because I keep looking at the score, and it shows me 13 to 90. And I'm like, no, no, you scored more points than that. So that was kind of weird. But we'll finish it off with uh, WFMF Chainsaws, which is Brendan playing Team T. And that score was not fi- – was Brendan won 106 to 50. So – that was the largest margin of victory. Now, you didn't have anybody... Well, your kicker got 21 points. Jeez. Yes, he did. Defense got 18. Mm-hmm. Um, and you sat Arian Foster, who had 28 points. So, you know, not bad. <laughs> <You> can't <laughs> complain about Foster on the bench. There you go. But Tom Brady yeah. actually did have 20 points that week, so... Yeah. I think there were some change-ups that I had meant to do, but I was gone, like... From Thursday to Monday. And for so, some reason, Brendan is just totally stubborn and will not download the app on his phone to make everything so much easier for himself. What happened? Not happening. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Only losers the dark side. download apps on their phone. Join the dark side. Something, <laughs> something dark side. Look, I have a strategy, a game plan, and it's mostly worked for me so far. I'm going to see this through, this whole... Don't ever look at it on a phone strategy. <laughs> oh, I will not computer screen. Well, I will not give fantasy advice, uh, fantasy advice this season because it's my fantasy advice. Advice has not worked so far. Well, and it's funny because if you followed my rules, you would have a lot better team. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yes. uh, that's all I'm saying. That's I all I'm so saying. Good. But yeah, so that's the rundown from the Words from My Face League. Of course, you can always catch up on it. Uh, it's it's viewable to the public if you check out on ESPN.com. It is the Words from My Face League if you want to see what's going on with that. Um, you do have three of the players right here, so you know I am in first. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, I want I'm going that. on the biggest win okay. streak, <laughs> biggest win streak ever this week. Hey man, you could do it. I mean, you Except could be you could be nine and four. All you got to do is win the next eight, eight games in a row. You're in the playoffs. Reggie Wayne only got me two points. That's not working. That game's only eight minutes away from ending. I believe J.J. Watt has another touchdown in that game. It seems like J.J. Watt has become... I wish I could put him in as my tight end because it seems like he's caught a touchdown the past two weeks in a row. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, uh, yeah I think that's going to be about doing it for tonight. So thank you, Lucas, for joining us tonight. We thank really you appreciated your me. input. And uh, we'll have you back sometime. But uh, as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. And you? we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Oh, yeah, I didn't let you say yo. Yo. Okay, there you go. Now kick off the music. Where we dance, Lucas? Where are you dancing, guys?
I guess it's not very easy for Lucas to headbang his way out of uh, here when he doesn't have any hair. I don't have. I was like, this is not going anywhere. I was like, halfway through, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, good night, everybody.